All right, so today we'll talk about graphing square root functions. Now, what I've drawn on the board is actually two functions, uh, one that you're very familiar with from quadratics, which is the parabolas, okay, and then one from this chapter, which is dealing with square root functions. Now, if you notice, they have a lot of similarities. They do have some differences, like, for example, the square and then the square root. Okay, but they do have a lot of similarities. We're going to talk about on Desmos what those similarities do. All right, so here's the parent function, square root. I just spell out squirt, and it actually spells it out for me, okay? So this is the parent function. This is the, the granddaddy of them all. Now, if you notice, it starts here and goes up and to the right forever. So if I zoom out enough, and I keep going and if I keep going in this direction I'll keep going up forever there's no we call this boundless there is no boundary for it uh, to the right now to the left there is a boundary why because we cannot square root a negative and get a real answer Okay, so that's one of the most important things you're going to need to know, especially about the domain. Okay, so the domain of this bad boy is going to be the first unique one where we didn't have it. Okay, now if you remember our domain, let's, uh, let's go ahead and take this away for a little bit. And let's talk about domain, especially with the parent function of a parabola. Okay, domain of this would be domain is, and then I would use some fancy uh, lettering, it would be from... Well, actually, it would be from zero up to infinity. So let me type in infinity real fast. Alt two three six. Okay, and we would use an open close, an open notation like that. Range. Well, actually, no, that's range. I accidentally typed in range first. So let's change that to range. There we go. Okay. Now domain would be all real numbers. Okay, and we've been used to a lot of them like that. Now, for example, if we did an absolute value, y equals uh, the absolute value of x. Okay, something looks like this. Now, I will type in domain first for certain. So domain, we've been used to, domain is all real numbers. Okay, whereas range is from 0 to infinity. Oops, let's get that back to there. There we go. Okay, so these ones are pretty set forward. They're, they're, they're very similar, okay? Now, there is no restrictions going left to right, and that's where domain steps in. So when we look at this one, okay, if you notice, the domain goes from 0 to the right. So we would say the domain is from 0 to positive infinity. Oops, and I put in that curly brace again. No, it should be a square brace. Okay. Now range, this is the first time you've seen a function uh, where you've actually had the domain not be all real numbers. Range is actually going to be, if, remember range is up and down, so the lowest this goes is zero, and the highest it goes, even though it's increasing very slowly because we're always square rooting, it actually goes up to infinity. So range would be from zero to infinity, this way, okay? So we have three different types of graphs that you've learned about domain and range, and now it's going to be square root ones, okay? So whenever you're looking for domain, look for the leftmost point and that's going to be the beginning of your domain right there so for example this is zero now if I had had a plus one the domain changes from zero to negative one okay so the domain changes right there okay now if you notice the range actually doesn't change unless I move the cursor outside of the square root and put something on top okay all right, now it's not going to highlight like it usually does because it's not part of the axis, but the range will actually change to 1. So you could actually say the domain will be all of the numbers, you could say the opposite of whatever this is, up to infinity. Okay. Now if I did a negative version, it's going to be upside down. So this one is going to be going to negative infinity, whereas the domain is still going to go positive. Okay. 
So if I change it back to positive, this changes back to positive. Pretty simple right there. As a matter of fact, I shouldn't have written it like that. I should have actually written it like this. So if I had the negative right here, this is my bad, you would actually move everything around. So this would become the parentheses. You always start with the lowest or the leftmost point up to 1. Okay, so the domain would look like this and the range would look like this. Now, if I had made this negative, which you won't be seeing in Algebra 1, if I had made this negative, this flips this one around. Okay, so this becomes parentheses negative infinity all the way up to negative, no, it would be positive 1 in this case. Okay, and we would have it like this and you don't even need the positive, you can just put one. Okay, so this is set notation. Now, if you want to say this domain, uh, if you want to say this a different way, let's just go back to regular, okay? All right, so this is set notation. If you wanted to say the domain a little bit more commonplace, you could say x is uh, greater than or equal to alt 242 x is greater than or equal to negative 1, the leftmost point, okay, and range y is uh, greater than or equal to positive 1, okay, and whenever I change these signs, so like for example if I change this down, okay, domain moves over to 0, makes sense, and if I get rid of this, range will also change to 0, okay. So it just depends on the leftmost point as to your range and domain for square root functions for right now. Okay. Okay, this is my family of functions page that I usually reserve for Algebra 2 students. So this is a square root function. As you can see, it has variables in A, uh, B, H, and K. We're not going to focus on anything but H and K and see what those do, and then we'll focus on A. B, you will save actually for pre-calculus for understanding that. Okay, so right now A is 0.5, so I'm going to move it to 1. So this is what it normally looks like. Okay. All right, now if you notice, H and K are at 0, so I haven't shifted at all. So if I make H positive and I increase it, it's going to move to the left. So this is really interesting that I made a positive number, but if you remember from your work with parabolas, it just works backwards because it's just weird like that. So if I make it positive, it moves it left. If I make it negative, it moves it to the right, and it just keeps going that way, okay? All right, now if I make K positive, obviously it's going to move it up and down. Okay, so some pretty simple stuff right there. Now if I change A, that just changes how high it goes. So if I make A bigger, it's going to make it bigger, obviously, because we're multiplying by number. If I make it smaller than 1, it's going to make it closer to the x-axis. And if I make it negative, it's going to flip it right upside down, okay? Right, so there's the manipulations of the actual variables as you work with it. Okay. All right. So if you're presented with something that looks like this, y equals uh, negative three uh, square root of x minus five out here, you can actually tell several things about this. You know it's going to be a square root function. Why? Because it has a square root. Okay. It's going to be taller and it's going to be flipped upside down just because of the fact you know it's a negative three okay and it's going to be going it's going to be starting down at negative five okay now you can also notice by looking at some of the numbers there is no number in there with x and there is a number out here okay you can also notice the domain and range so the domain is going to be x is uh, greater than or equal to zero because there is no number in there and then range is going to be y is greater than or equal to negative five okay well actually no it's going to be flipped upside down so it's going to be less than so it's going to be alt two four three there we go the reason being it's going to be upside down and if we draw it we can actually confirm that Okay, and this is just me drawing it out. I haven't even used Desmos, and you guys are totally allowed to use Desmos. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, it's going to be stretched down like this. 
okay and voila I have it all set up and that actually makes sense as to why the range is less than or equal to negative 5 now if you are desperately wanting to make set notation for this okay you would actually say let me see 0 uh, square bracket all the way up to infinity open uh, parentheses and then this one would be you once again you have to start at the lowest so this would be negative infinity comma negative five square bracket and there you go and you could actually have set notation for domain and range for this okay now another cool idea behind this is that you can actually take a square root equation and actually graph it and look at the graph of the square root function with the actual graph so here let me show you what I'm talking about okay so let's say I had the square root of 4x minus 5 equals 7 and I wanted to actually solve it by graphing okay so what you do is you set each side equal to y so y equals the square root of and you don't need to put parentheses but you could 4x minus 5 okay so there's my actual graph now what you're also going to do is set this equal to 7 okay so you set them both to 7 now what you do is zoom out until you can see the intersection and you can see the actual answer is going to be 13.5 now here's the cool thing about this you can tell right away that by graphing and finding the solution where they cross you can actually say hey there is a solution this is not extraneous okay and that's the really cool thing about graphing with the functions uh, you can set them both equal to y and graph and see where they cross and you can actually get your answer And that's the really cool part about it okay all right now what if I wanted to make this a negative okay what I would just do is do a negative and as you can see they never cross so no matter how I work this problem I'm never going to get an answer that actually works with it okay so because they never cross I have an extraneous solution to whatever I actually solve so you can actually use this to check your work real fast or you can use it to do your work real fast it's totally up to you how you want to do it okay all right but that's how you solve uh, square root functions graphically and use the graphing calculator to help you out. Okay? Thank you very much and have a great day. Bye.